She really fell in love with the South. Um, the, the heat of the summers never bothered her. It was an adventure, uh, like going to a foreign land, because things were so different here than what she was used to growing up in the North. In 1928, Marjorie Canan Rawlings and her husband Charles left their urban surroundings in Rochester, New York, to explore the backwoods of North Central Florida with Charles's brothers. They did something really unbelievable at that time. Uh, they went down to what today is the Ocala National Forest, what we knew of as the Big Scrub. The Big Scrub, a land where a species of scrawny tree, the sand pine, has won a battle for existence in a nearly sterile soil. It has fought its stunted way into an almost impenetrable mass of tangled growth. The Big Scrub, well-named, unfriendly to man, scarred by abandoned homes of forgotten pioneers. They stayed down there for over two weeks. They came back. They never got to Cross Creek on that trip. They came back and told the brothers in Island Grove that they would like to buy a place in Florida with a house on it and so forth. They went back to New York and a week or so later, the brothers wrote them that there was a place for sale at a place called Cross Creek near Island Grove and uh, they might be interested in. They were so enthused about it that Ms. Rollins sent a deposit on the place to hold it until they got down. She really loved the grove. She loved the vast open prairies and the environment. She studied very carefully the birds and animals. Um, and just, it was just an adventure for her. For Rawlings, part of the adventure was getting to know her neighbors, the unique pioneer families known as the Florida Crackers, which she featured in her stories. Most of the folks that she lived among were either hunters, fishermen, uh, citrus growers, some gigged frogs, some uh, hunted alligators, some went bear hunting. Um, so they were well versed in the ways of survival in a rural setting. They may not have been able to read or write or were not educated, perhaps. She found them to have integrity. She was delighted by the characters that they were, that she could portray in her stories, uh, the common knowledge that they had about survival, the resilience that they had to have to survive. surviving on our own. Uh, you uh, didn't expect anything from your government. There was no welfare during the Depression years. There was no government was a problem, not an aid. As new industries arrived in Florida, the state government became increasingly problematic for the cracker people by creating regulations restricting certain methods of commercial fishing on Orange and Lockwoosa lakes. Those restrictions affected the income of nearly every family at the creek. The state made it against the law to uh, sane or fish the lakes commercially. Everything into uh, recreation, you know, it take just it ruined the commercial and uh, the local recreation for us. People live around here. People travel from all over to come because Orange Lake was known as uh, the top or one of the top uh, bass fishing lakes in the country. A number of sportsmen demanded of the state government to stop these commercial fishermen. They catch. They caught all the fish. Was the reason he didn't get any. Was it, they caught them all. Uh, I have seen times that I knew of 20 bass being put back in the lake. And the next day, uh, I took somebody fishing there because I knew they were put there, but he had the wrong kind of bait. He pulled his plug way too fast. He was bumping the boat around, making noise, and an endless amount of factors of why he wouldn't catch anything if they were biting. And, but he would 
uh, then decided to tell me that the damn commercial fishermen caught them all. The game warden would come by and check everybody's pickup trucks to see if they could find fish scales. And, um, you know, then they'd start watching what they were doing because that meant they were probably signing. This created a sort of satire at the creek in which the local fishermen would evade arrest by the game wardens who were former fishermen themselves. There were a hundred years where people did what they wanted to do and needed to do to survive. And then all of a sudden other people are coming in and saying, oh, you can't do that anymore. Of course there was conflict. The natural isolation of the creek was only added to in that they made it illegal. Uh, but uh, there certainly was no one who felt that there was any lack of honor in commercially fishing. Even though it was illegal, a lot of people done it. You know, it, it, that wasn't morally wrong, you know, so you didn't feel like you were really breaking the law. This was the beginning of a series of new economic and legal changes at the creek, including the appropriation of their surrounding wilderness into government-managed property. Got a lot of uh, management areas around here that the state manages uh, when I was a kid. I own thousands and thousands of acres of land that you, you were allowed to hunt on, but you had to have a management area stamp and stuff like that. But in, in addition to your regular hunting license, a lot of times you didn't, you didn't have to go in the management area. You could just hunt in your backyard. The difference of growing up at Cross Creek one of the big differences is the license, the permission to do what has been natural and normal since man emerged from the cave. In addition to new hunting laws, they also faced their biggest detriment, the end of open range cattle at the creek. When I was young, a boy growing up, Marion County had fence law. And there was a, every road into Marion County had a stop gap. They had big steel pipe about this close together. And uh, uh, a cow knows better than to try to walk across it. They don't fall in it and get trapped. But the big trucks had to, to go brrr over it. <laughs> Marjorie Canan Rawlings immersed herself in the world of the Florida crackers. Although she recognized the inevitability of the transition to modernity in the state, she wanted to capture the notions of these simple people before time forgot them. These were people who were hands-on down to earth um, and living very precariously day to day, but still having a positive attitude. She mentioned in Cross Creek that my dad's mom and dad, my grandparents, if they, they, if they were millionaires, they'd still rather be out here on the lake fishing. 